To better explain the hierarchy model, we're actually going to break down the different levels that make up a page within the design editor. We've nicknamed this the VEV hierarchy model, which is roughly broken down into five parts. We start with the page or our canvas, then we have our sections, then frames, elements, and lastly, add-ons, which are things like animations or interactivity. So let's start with the page. Now in your project, the canvas or page is actually the very first building block. Web developers know this as the body. However, the page itself is the only website level that cannot be customized inside the design editor. For instance, if you want to apply background color, you'll do this in a section, not on the page itself. Now let's take a look at our page content panel here. We can actually see an easier breakdown of the rest of the hierarchy model. We have our second level, sections. Sections will always be the first level of the page content like this, with other levels like frames and elements indented. This is to show their relationship as a child of that section, or simply nested within that section. You'll notice that when you add a section block to your canvas, you'll also need to specify the height, either in pixels or percentage. Now to get that full screen immersive effect, you can actually set your height as 100% and minimum height or min height as 900 pixels. This will ensure that it remains large no matter the browser window size. You can also apply a background, a fill, image, or gradient. We will do an image here. You can select your image and we can choose a nice one here. And if you'd like to, you can also add an overlay to your image. The way you do this is to add a new fill background. Now make sure that this is a layer above the image like this. Then you can change the alpha or transparency level to be something like 20 or 50. Sections won't just be for heroes or headers, but also for things like CTAs and any other building block within your website. So while we've set the hero to be 100%, a CTA section, for instance, may be closer to 400 pixels. You can also explore the add menu to add special sections that come equipped with features or additional functionality. For example, you can add a horizontal scrolling section, which allows you to change the scroll of your page from vertical to horizontal. Going on to the third level, we have frames. Now frames are a great way to group your elements in order to keep them organized and reposition them in sync. For example, here we've designed a custom CTA button, which is made up of text, a shape, and a circle. If we kept these just as elements, we would need to move each element separately every single time. Instead, we can select them all and use our shortcut to create a frame, which is Apple or Command G. This now groups those elements within a frame and allows us to move them in sync. Frames are also a great way to avoid a lot of pain when adapting a design component to be fully responsive. For this, we're going to cover more in depth in a later tutorial. Moving on to our fourth level, elements. Now, these are all things you would add to your canvas, text, images, videos, shapes, you name it. Elements do not need to be within a frame, but it is best practice when designing a specific component like a card or organizing multiple text boxes. Elements can actually live in two places in the hierarchy, underneath the section level or within the frame level, again, depending on what you are building. For basic elements, you can double click to easily customize to do things like input text or change images. For more advanced elements and features, double clicking opens a parameter menu or customization options for that specific element. Let's take this YouTube element for example. Once we double click it, this will open up customization options that we can set. You can see here we have video URL, we can choose to loop it, autoplay, hide controls, and hide full screen. Certain features will have specific options you can customize just like this. Now to the last level, add-ons. Add-ons are everything you might add to an element to make it go from static to dynamic. It could be an animation, a link, or more advanced like scroll speed and sticky positioning. You can assign an element and add-on by using the top toolbar here. You can explore and search the add menu, and once you've found what you want, you simply click. You can access the customization options two ways. First, by going to the page content panel here, or second, by going to the top toolbar here. 
By clicking, you will open up the customization options for that specific add-on. Here we have the animation tool. You can choose to set on load, on click, on hover, or on scroll. For now, we will just do on load. You can then set a preset like slide in. Once you've set the preset, you can set other options like duration, delay, how you want it to animate in, and you can choose to loop or run once. You can also change the opacity and the start and end points of the animation. The great thing about using add-ons is that your site will go from static to dynamic and truly interactive. And with all the features within VEV, you can unlock a limitless design toolbox to build highly interactive and beautiful websites. For example, in this section, we've used a combination of animations and sticky positioning to create an immersive experience as the user scrolls through. And there we have it. We've covered everything from sections all the way down to add-ons. Now, hopefully this will help you create your first project inside of VEV.